December 1915 in Ratvik, Sweden, was a Swedish cardiac surgeon who worked at Zurich University Hospital from 1961 until his retirement in 1985. Clarence Crawford introduced him to the field of cardiac surgery in 1948. In 1959, a key setting from Sweden first published an ingenious technique for physiological correction of transposition of great arteries, TGA, utilizing flaps of atrial wall to interchange the venous inflows into the two ventricles. The procedure which takes his name became the first viable intracardiac surgery for the relief of cyanosis in patients with TGA. It was soon to be overshadowed, albeit temporarily, by another atrial switch procedure described by Mustard et al. from Toronto in 1964. William Thornton Mustard, 1914 to 1987. The development of late caval obstruction after the Mustard operation vindicates Senning's original statement in 1959. Quote, Since operations for this anomaly have to be performed in small children, a method for correcting the defect has been developed, avoiding the use of prosthesis or grafts, which later, when the child is growing, may lead to obstruction of the bloodstream. Unquote. Although the setting operation was largely abandoned in favor of the mustard technique in the 1960s, excellent long-term, greater than 10 years function after setting operations have now been reported. The surgical technique described here differs from the original setting operation, hence the modification. A. Patch augmentation, pericardium or cortex of the atrial septal flap and B pericardial patch enlargement of the pulmonary venous pathway. First step, construction of atrial flap. Atrial flap is created from the limbic tissue anteriorly toward the superior and inferior aspects of each respective right pulmonary vein. This flap remains attached at the interatrial groove. Detach at the septal flap. When the septum is detached from the atrial wall superiorly, it is useful to press the forceps from between the SVC, the aorta, and the right pulmonary artery toward the atrium to get a feel about the remaining thickness of the atrial wall. PFO or a small ASD can be closed directly. Alternatively, it is possible to make a cutback in the coronary sinus that will provide a second flap, which, sutured to the septal flap, will provide enough tissue. The coronary sinus cutback also enables us to construct the wider IBC channel. It is important to place the scissors deep into the coronary sinus or to place them over a pair of forceps. The cutback is then made into the coronary sinus with one single cut. Second step, construction of partial pulmonary venous pathway. Here, we demonstrate two methods with first step. In the first scenario, if there is a patent for omnivale, PFO, or a small atrial septal defect, ASD, both of them can be closed directly. Then, this native septal flap is detached for creation of partial pulmonary venous pathway by keeping the base of this native septal flap attached to the atrial septum. The suturing starts at the far end of the left atrium on the ledge of muscle that separates the opening of the left atrial appendage and the opening of the left pulmonary veins. A double-ended suture is used to approximate the midpoint of the atrial septal flap to the midpoint of this ledge of muscle. The two ends of the suture are then used to continue the suture line superiorly and inferiorly. Superiorly, the upper margin of the flap is sutured to the roof of the left atrium. It is important to keep the suture line as far back into the left atrium as possible, so as not to compromise the SVC pathway into the left atrium. It is also important to keep the lengths of the flap and atrial wall equal, so as not to have excessive tension on the suture line since the roof of the left atrium is relatively mobile. In the rare event of a left superior vena cava draining into the left atrium, the suture line must run below the point of entry of the anomalous vein so that the left caval vein drains into the systemic venous compartment. The inferior margin of the flap is sutured to the ridge raised behind the mitral valve in the floor of the left atrium, keeping a safe distance of 5 mm away from the posterior mitral annulus. This portion of the left atrium can be placated without any consequence if the inferior margin of the atrial flap is shorter. This suture line ends at the floor of the right atrium 
close to the opening of the quaternary sinus at the lower end of the atrial septum. The adequacy of the space behind the atrial septal flap is checked at this point to ensure that the left pulmonary veins have unhindered egress. The second scenario is using an autologous pericardial patch as demonstrated in the left atrium to its origin at the SVC. These suture lines should diverge so as not to constrict the posterior pathway for left pulmonary venous return, principle of suturing. The right flap and the left flap of this atrial flap can also be referred to as inferior border of flap and superior border of flap respectively. One arm of the double-ended suture attaches the flap superiorly, staying below the cut edge of the septum. The lower suture line runs towards the stay stitch below the right inferior pulmonary vein. This completes the floor of the SVC and IVC channel. Third step, construction of the IVC pathway and SVC pathway. IVC pathway. The posterior base right atrial flap is sutured from the lower angle around the IVC. The capital pathway is completed anteriorly by stitching the caudal extent of the right side of the free right atrial wall to the atrial tissue above the IVC orifice and continuing to the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus is left to drain with pulmonary venous blood. If the coronary sinus has been incised, the coronary sinus blood drains within the systemic venous pathway. The suture line is placed posterior to the remaining rim of the coronary sinus to avoid injury to the atrioventricular node, AV. Construction of a wide IVC pathway is this ensured by inserting a temporary short stent cut from a chest drain or piece of plastic tubing. SVC pathway. A second suture is used to complete the superior attachment around the SVC and along the limbic tissue. Both the IVC and SVC pathway flaps are sutured to the free edge of the anterior limb of the atrial septum, anterior mitral annulus, thereby redirecting the systemic venous return through the atrial septal defect to the mitral valve and left ventricle. Fourth step, completion of the final pulmonary venous pathway. The perimeter of the left atriotomy is extended by incising onto the right superior pulmonary vein for a distance of about 1 cm. The pulmonary venous pathway is constructed by initially placing an interrupted 6 over 0 proline sutures from the appropriate point E on the free right atrial wall to the edge of the incision point F between the right pulmonary veins. Interrupted sutures attach the remaining segment of this flap to the right mark edge of the left atriotomy in order to complete the pulmonary venous pathway. Interrupted sutures theoretically should not restrict future growth in this area. Anterior-based RA flap was sutured to the in-situ pericardium between the SVC and the IVC so as to make a pulmonary venous chamber and this chamber was used to redirect the pulmonary venous return into the tricuspid valve leaving the coronary sinus either in systemic venous confluence or pulmonary venous confluence. Cavill snares are now released. Rewarming is started. Air is carefully evacuated from the heart via aortic needle vent. This vent is kept on low suction until we are ready to discontinue bypass pathway. Scientific achievements of a key setting. 1. Heart-lung machine. It was Clarence Crawford who put him in a windowless basement room at the Karolinska University Hospital in Stockholm and gave him the task of developing a heart-lung machine, which he succeeded in doing in a relatively short time. This achievement by Senning shows that external working conditions are never general prerequisites for the success of work. 2. Roller Oxygenator Developed roller oxygenator, which was successful in animal experiments in 1951 and successfully used in the world's second operation on humans and the first in Europe in 1953. 3. Open heart surgery on humans. Together with Clarence Crawford, he performed the first successful open heart surgery on humans in Europe using the heart lung machine in 1953. Further development of the heart lung machine according to Crawford Senning, 1951. 4. 
implantable heart pacemaker. Together with the electrical engineer, Rune Elfvist, a key setting developed the first implantable pacemaker in 1958, consisting of two externally rechargeable nickel-cadmium cells and a blocking oscillator, pulse amplitude 2.5 volts, duration 2 milliseconds, frequency 70 hertz, with two germanium transistors. The components of the first device were placed in a shoe polish box, and this was filled with epoxy resin. However, Senning was opposed to any medical patent on the grounds that valuable time would be lost and that the suffering people would only benefit from his idea much later. He repeatedly said, quote, medical discoveries belong to the patients and not to the inventor. If we hadn't invented it, someone else would have done it tomorrow, unquote. Arne Larsen, the first pacemaker patient, outlived his surgeon after having to replace 26 pacemakers due to battery exhaustion over the past almost 43 years. He died a year after Senning's death from metastatic melanoma. Original of the worldwide first implantable heart pacemaker, 1958. Copy of the first implantable heart pacemaker. First commercial heart pacemaker, Elma Shenander. 1960-61 Commercial Heart Pacemaker Elma Shenander 1965-66 5. Senning's Operation In Senning's neighbor's house in Sweden, a child died of transposition of the great vessels. Inspired by this sad case, Senning spent all night scribbling drawings on paper that only he could read. With this enormous three-dimensional imagination, Senning's surgical method for correcting transposition of the great vessels was created that night, which was to make history as the Senning operation. Senning's operation. 6. Electrically induced ventricular fibrillation. As early as 1951, he completed the extracorporeal circuit technique using electrically induced ventricular fibrillation during cardiac arrest to prevent air embolism and hypothermia to reduce oxygen consumption. Later, it was replaced by drug-induced cardioplegia. 7. Correction of defective confluence of pulmonary veins with left atrium. In 1956, he performed the first total correction of a congenital malposition of the junction of the pulmonary veins with the left atrium. 8. World's first operation on the coronaries using the strip graft technique. Since 1955, long before the first bypass operation by René Favaloro in Cleveland in 1968, Senning had been experimentally and later clinically involved in coronary surgery. In 1958, he successfully performed the first coronary operation, that is, the first in arterectomy of the coronary arteries, which was completed with a venous of vena graft. 9. Correction of an atrial septal defect in 1959. 10. Surgical technique of left atrial bypass. In 1963, followed the first successful use of a left heart bypass. The first step for the LVAD, left ventricular assist device, the artificial left heart, so common today. 11. Development of an aortic valve replacement. Together with Donald N. Ross in London, Senning also opened the way for anticoagulation-free follow-up of heart valve patients. Independently and without knowledge of Donald and Ross, autografting of the pulmonary valve, he developed a technique of aortic valve replacement by free autographs of the fascia lata two months after Ross in October 1962. Together with Martin Rothlin, he was then able to report in 1971 141 cases that he had corrected the aortic valve with this surgical method, as well as over 100 cases of mitral valve reconstruction. Again, this was one of his early Zurich achievements that was adopted throughout the world. 12. Kidney Transplants Having barely arrived in Switzerland, Senning performed the first kidney transplantation in Switzerland on the 17th of December 1964 and shortly afterwards published the first major series of over 30 kidney transplants with cadaveric kidneys. It is worth mentioning here that Senning's first kidney transplant series was the first to be published worldwide and that it was groundbreaking for the subsequent Largadere era.
13, Heart Transplants. On the 14th of April, 1969, Senning performed the first heart transplantation in Switzerland, and shortly afterwards, the second. Christiane Bernard, the great South African heart surgeon, needed seven hours for the first heart transplant, whereas Senning needed three hours for the first and only two hours for the second, and this already in 1969. 14. Correction of a Bud Sherry Syndrome. A milestone was the ingenious correction of a Bud Sherry syndrome crowned with success in 1981, in which he surgically removed the outflow stenosis of the hepatic veins through the right heart. This opened up a new path for liver surgery. This idea was in turn so groundbreaking that the banal liver puncture, a routine method, has nowadays been replaced by the transvenous transatrial liver biopsy. This eliminated the risk of intra-abdominal hemorrhage. 15. Balloon Dilatation Andreas Kranzig, who first performed the now widely used coronary balloon dilatation in Zurich on the 16th of December 1977, needed Senning's assistance because the delicate coronary vessel could rupture during dilatation and the patient could die shortly afterwards. Aki Senning and Marco Turina Croatian cardiac surgeon were standing by next to Grunzig so that, in the event of a rupture of the coronary artery, they could intervene immediately with the surgical team standing by in the Animal Experimental Laboratory. 16. First intensive care unit in Central Europe was installed on the 17th of April, 1961. 17. Further developments. A. Development of the intra-arterial vascular coil a precursor of the intra-arterial vascular prosthesis, together with Dirk Maas. B. Various pacemaker electrodes together with Itzvan Babutai. C. Baby heart lung machine together with Babutai and Marco Turina. D. Left diaphragm replacement with pedicled pericardial valves together with Paul Hanlosser. E. Technique of kidney transplantation together with Felix Largadel. F. Removal of renal artery stenosis together with George Mayer and Ernst Zing. G. Small Senning Bulldog Clamp. Senning Suction Cup. Senning Babutai Valve of the Siemens Respirator. Babutai Helix Electro. 18. Bjork's Thoracoplasty, which was first performed by Senning while still in Stockholm, and the funnel chest correction according to Senning Johansson, which was first performed in 1951. A key setting, RIP, 21st of July, 2000, in Zurich, Switzerland.